Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing steady flow analysis for in specifically the compute menu and some of the run options. All right, so what I have on the screen here is my HECRAS. I have a very simple uh, river, a reach with a few cross sections and one lateral structure. If we go up to the run menu and then click on steady flow analysis, we have the steady flow analysis dialog box pop up right here. And ultimately what we're going to be doing is saving a plan file, modifying a few options, discussing this option menu, and then clicking the compute button and running a simulation. So before that we do that, let's go ahead and check out the model real quick. I've got, again, a reach with three cross sections. I've already ran the simulation, so you see the water surface. But um, never mind that. We have the cross section data here at River Station 0, 1,000, and 2,000 feet. And then if we go up to the edit menu, steady flow data, we have the flow rates for three different flow profiles. There's a profile 1, 2, and 3 at flow rates of 2,800, 3,100, and 3,400 CFS, respectively. Okay, this is at River Station 2000. I should also mention I have some boundary conditions specified right here, which are based on known water surfaces. The upstream and downstream uh, known water surface elevations are entered with uh, data right here. So that's uh, the upstream, and then this is the downstream, same thing. All right, anyway, let's move on to the actual content of the video, which is the compute menu. So I'm going to click OK and then close the steady flow data here. And then if I click on run, steady flow analysis. If you haven't already, you'd wanna go ahead and save a plan file, which will be a title and then a file name ending with a .p01. You can do that by going up to file and then new plan, or you can save a new plan. And then once you do that, you'll be prompted with uh, the file path, as well as the title, and then the name of the file itself will be the title, dot e and then whatever the next number is so it'll start with zero one if you don't have any yet all right so i'm going to cancel that because i already have my plan saved next let's talk about these options here which are steady flow analysis options that you have the ability to set the first one here is encroachments this option allows the user to perform a floodway encroachment analysis this topic is a little bit too involved to include in this lesson it will have its own lesson later in this playlist where I will describe how encroachment calculations work for the various different encroachment methods. Okay, but for now, we're just going to not use encroachments. So I'll click cancel to that. The next option down in this menu is conveyance calculations. This option allows the user to tell the program how to calculate conveyance in the overbanks. The results from these two different options may differ. So the top option here, which is the default, is to make that computation at breaks in the end values only. For this first option, HECRAS will sum wetted parameters and areas between breaks in the end values and then calculate conveyance at these locations. If you select the bottom option, this is between every coordinate point, HEC2 style it says. HECRAS will calculate wetted perimeter area and conveyance between every coordinate point in the overbanks. Okay, so I'm going to go with the default value here. This is the this is at uh, breaks in the end values only. So I'll click OK. The next option down is friction slope method. This is how we're going to tell HECRAS how to calculate the friction slope. And you see we have five different options based on these radio buttons. So you can only select one and only one. And then this bottom option down here basically tells HECRAS to determine which method should be selected and then use that. So if you want to specify a certain method, select one of the first five radio buttons, average conveyance, average friction slope, geometric mean friction slope, and a few different methods there. Also, there are defaults set. So for steady flow analysis, which is this first one, the default is this average conveyance, but the default for unsteady flow uh, cross sections is the second one so i'm just going to stick with the first one and then click ok all right the next option down here is set calculation tolerances so what we see from this is a number of different tolerances that we can set that are used during the compute routine this option allows the user to override the default settings and these are the default values we're seeing here in the text box along the right column 
uh, for the calculation tolerances. These tolerances are used to determine convergence. So we can just read what they are here. It's water surface calculation tolerance between 0 0.0001 feet and 0 0.1 feet. Next is critical depth tolerance. So I'm not going to read all these or the range, but you see what the acceptable range is here, inclusive. So the lowest this can be is 0 0.0001, and then the highest it can be is 0 0.1. If you find that your models are taking too long to converge, then you may increase the tolerance, or if they converge too quickly and you think that the correct answer could be a little bit more precise, you may want to decrease the tolerance, the same way tolerances are used for all, all of these models. And then um, maximum number of iterations between 3 and 40. The default value here is 20. And if you ever make any changes to these tolerance values and you want to reset them, you can just click this defaults button right here and it'll reset. So if I change this to 0 0.02 and then click the default button, it resets just like that. Not all of these tolerance values will be used in every simulation. For instance, the last three deal with split flow. And in a simple model like mine, I'm not going to have any split flow. Actually, I'm sorry, I will with this lateral structure. But um, in some cases, you will not have split flow, for instance, in which case the last three tolerance values would not be used. Okay, so I'm going to close the tolerance uh, option button. Next up for the option is the critical depth output option. So what we have here is just a checkbox on or off to calculate critical depth. This option allows the user to instruct the computational program to calculate critical depth at all locations. Okay, and then the next one down here is critical depth computation method. So if we're calculating critical depth, this option here is which method to use. Parabolic method is the faster method. This method will definitely be faster, but it will only find one minimum and it is um, more likely to fail. And that failure may occur at levee breaks or ineffective flow areas. So if that's happening or you want to find multiple locations, select this first option here, which is multiple critical depth search. It will take longer, but it's a little bit more robust of a search routine. It's slower. It can find up to three minimums, and it should be used if you suspect that the parabolic method is resulting from incorrect data. Next in the options menu, we have flow optimization. This option allows the user to have the program optimize the split flow at lateral structures, stream junctions, lateral diversions, and pump stations. So you see across the top, we have tabs here for junction, lateral structure, reach storage area, and pumps. The user's manual for this version is a, a little bit different with uh, some of the wording and some of the, the screenshots, but that's okay. Right now in my model, I only have one lateral structure, so that we're seeing that right here. And that's why we're seeing this lateral structure at River Station 800 as giving me the option to optimize or not optimize. I do want to optimize this lateral structure. And what that means is for the first iteration, the flow split optimization, the HECRAS will assume that there's zero flow through the lateral structure. And then it'll co compute the water surface elevation of the main channel. And then it'll compute what that flow through the lateral structure would be based on the water surface elevation of the main channel. And then it will subtract that value from the main channel as it goes through the lateral structure. And then basically repeat that process over and over iteratively until the tolerance is met. This optimization checkbox is also available in the lateral structure options. So let me go ahead and um, let me check it on for optimize. I'll click OK. I'll click lateral structure. Let me bring this over here. And then if I click on optimization, um, well, it's checked on now. So anyway, this is the same control that we were looking at with the same steady flow analysis and the same check uh, tabs and everything. So options, flow optimization, and it's checked. Okay. Okay. So I'll click OK to that. The next option down here is check data before execution. So what that is, is just a checkbox on and off. When I'm clicking it, it doesn't do anything, but it will toggle this check mark um, on and off every time I check it. What this does is before the user clicks compute, it will generate a check to make sure that all the required input data is correct. And if it is correct and valid, 
such that the um, compute is expected to be successful, it will run the compute. But if there happens to be any errors in that data, it will display an error message without attempting to run the compute. So I like the sound of that. I'm going to keep this um, check mark next to check data before execution checked always, unless I have a good reason not to. All right, next down is set log file output level. So what we have here is a log output file. The level by default is zero here and zero here. We have a global log level that's set to zero and then individual component log level also set to zero. Zero means there's no log data recorded, which means it results in faster execution, but no information stored about the execution itself. The largest number in this uh, log level is 10, both at the global level and the individual level. And that means that will output the maximum log data. You may not want that much data uh, uh, logged, and you probably don't. There's actually a warning in the user's manual to say like four and five and even six is kind of a lot. So you may just want to adjust it up one or two. If you have questions about what happened during the simulation, during the compute routine, and you want some sort of log output, you can rerun it with a higher log level. Uh, again, the global log level can be set over here. And if you wanted to set the log level just for a specific river, reach, and then cross section, or you know anything like a lateral structure as well, then you can set that individual log level uh, by just clicking the set selected range, and then that's saved right down here. And then you can clear that out by clicking the clear button. All right, so I'll click OK. We have a couple more. There's view log file. So this is how you access the log file of the last compute routine. I don't have anything logged because you saw my log level was set to zero, but if I uh, compute with the log level, Greater than zero, I'd have something to look at there for my log. And then view runtime messages file. This is the message file that runs after a compute. So let's go ahead and run the compute first. So I've got everything saved and ready to go. I'm going to close my lateral structure dialog box. This button here also opens up the steady flow analysis. So yeah, this button that I just clicked is the same as going run steady flow analysis. And with everything set, everything looks good up here. I'll click on compute and then it's running the simulation now. OK, so it looks like it is completed. And in the next uh, lesson or two, I will talk about viewing results. But we see in the status here that we we are complete. This is a finished steady flow simulation and we're ready to look at some of our results. All right. Well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about the steady flow analysis dialog box and started by saving a plan and then stepping through the different options and explaining what options we have available to us in HECRAS when we run a steady flow analysis.